What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today's Down and Dirty. We are back in the studio because it's winter time and, and what better time to take on basic subjects like how do I go about digging a basement? This is a question that came from you guys in the comments. How do I go about digging a basement? I'm just gonna, we're, we're just gonna kind of put an end to all of the potential comments that we're gonna get right here. There are a hundred different ways that you could dig a basement. Everyone's got their own preference. Everyone's got their own method of doing it. This isn't the right or the wrong way to do it. It's just the way I approach it. So if you've got that comment, oh my God, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Just shut up. No one cares. No one wants to hear your opinion. This is just the way I do it. So that being said, we're going to flip over to the top down view and check out my super highly official basement layout. Now, as you can see, we did not pay a surveyor to stake this baby out, so she may not be a little square, but that's okay. What we've got is a relatively basic basement layout here. Uh, so we have your basement outline, and then we have this little jog here. And then in Michigan, at least, uh, we have trench footers. So you're not actually going to excavate this area of the garage here. Uh, generally, you will have someone come in third party that's going to have a trencher and do it, or you will just dig this after the fact with a narrow bucket and it will be a trench footer. If you have no idea what that means, well, ask some questions of those around you, or maybe we will do a video down the road on trench footers and what that is. Anyway, back to our Back to our topic. How do you approach a basement dig? If you've never done this before, uh, first of all, don't be intimidated. Basement digs seem very intimidating at first, but really what it just takes is a little bit of planning and a little bit of forethought, and then you just dig a hole like you would anywhere else. So what do I mean by planning? Well, let's look at our basement here. So I have a very not to scale excavator that we're gonna use for this, uh, but I, I, I kinda wanna show you guys what that looks like. It's way too big, I know that. We're gonna set them off to the side here. In this scenario, we're gonna pretend that the back of the house here is pretty balanced and this side of the house are pretty balanced. We really need a lot of material on this side and in front of the house. That's number one that I'm gonna be looking at when I walk up to a basement dig is where do I ultimately need material? And it makes sense, right? Because we've talked about it a bunch on this channel. When you double and triple touch material, you're, you're losing money. No one's paying you to dig the basement more than once. They're only paying you to dig it one time. When you go move material around after that, that's on your dollar. So the first thing we need to know is where do we need the material? Because that's going to help us determine where we're gonna start and where we're gonna finish on this thing. The second thing I'm thinking about is how many corners do I wanna to have to worry about closing out on? What do I mean by that? Let's look at our top down view. If you imagine we're gonna work our way around this entire basement and I'm going to finish my dig somewhere on this basement which means that I'm gonna be sitting outside the basement. Let's say that I started my basement dig here, going down this wall, then we went around and did this wall, this wall, and then we came back around. And so I'm gonna finish right here, sitting outside the basement, and I'm generally gonna have my, my machine positioned somewhere like this, and I'm reaching down into the hole and I am blindly having to come against this bank because I can't see because of the angle and I'm having to finish out this little corner here. Depending on how we dig this, if we dig it the wrong way, I will actually have two corners that I have to finish out because there is this corner here that I'll have to finish out on. And if I didn't think about this beforehand, then I'm going to have to come over here and I'm going to have to finish out on this corner as well. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a little bit lazy and I don't really like doing extra work if I don't have to. So if we plan this the right way, I can do this with one finish out corner. What do I mean? Well, let's say we start our basement dig right here with our machine facing this way. And I'm going to excavate everything from here going this way. And then I'm gonna continue around. And so now I've got a beautiful angle. I don't have to finish out. I can dig this one. I can go around, I can dig this one. I can go around, dig this one. I can go around and I can dig this one. And look at there, because this is already dug. I can sit right here and I only have one corner to close out on. Versus had I started on this wall, and I started to dig, and so all of this is gonna be excavated here and I work my way around. Well, now guess what? 
I've got to close out here on this corner. Then I've got to set up on this line, dig back, and I'm going to have to close out on this corner. That's two closeouts. I don't want to do that. That's a lot of effort and it's a lot of effort I don't want to put in, to be totally honest. So as you can see, just a little bit of planning and we've already started to develop an idea of where we want to start. We know that we need the most material in the front and on the camera left side of the house here. So if I start on this line here, that does two things for me. One is we only have one closeout like we just discussed. But then the second thing is I can actually hog a fair amount of material out here in the middle and throw it to the front of the house, which is where we need it, which is key. So let's talk about when we go to set up our machine. When I set up my machine on my line, we've already decided how we're gonna dig this. We're gonna start on this line here and work our way around the house. When I set up my machine, I'm going to position to myself to where, and again, my excavator is not to scale, it's oversized. So realistically, you'll probably be sitting right about here, but because our excavator is so huge, we're gonna scoot back. I wanna set up in a way that when my machine is square with my tracks here and I reach out, you're gonna notice we're gonna set up to where we have about a foot and a half to two foot of what we call overdig. What do I mean by overdig? Well, if you think about it, once we dig this hole, our concrete guys are gonna have to come in here and they're gonna have to set up forms. Well, they can't do that if the wall is, of dirt is right there. So we actually need to dig a little bit further out. And so when we dig our basement, we are going to dig this whole thing with about a foot and a half to two feet. This is something that you or your employer will talk to your concrete guys and figure out exactly how much overdig they want. But we're gonna dig this entire basement a little oversized. But the key with that is you have to stay square to your hole. It makes no sense to do a giant overdig and have this giant bow in the wall. That makes a lot of work for everybody. It's a waste of time and resources on your uh, part. It makes it more difficult for the concrete guys to square their hole up. So we're gonna make sure that we're square. So again, coming back to my machine setup, I'm gonna set up in a way that when I do a full, and, and, and I do this, I physically do this. I do a dig pass in the air and make sure that my machine is perfectly in line before I ever take a bite. Starting here, I'm going to start right at this line and I'm gonna to start to excavate as much as I can reach in this area here. But I'm also gonna kind of create a wedge here. In fact, it's probably gonna wedge a little bit back as I dig. So what I'm gonna do, set up on our line and I'm gonna start making my passes. My first pass is gonna be right on my line and I'm going to establish that line and then we're gonna throw the material out in front of the house. Now that I've established this first pass right here, the, you know, pretend this is one bucket wide, I know it's not exact. Now that we've established this first pass right here, I'm always gonna make sure that this pass stays about a foot to two feet deeper than all of my excavation out here in the middle. The reason we're doing that is it's going to ensure that your bucket is held very tight against this outside edge, which gives us a very sheer, very clean face, and it gives us a very square hole, and it makes for a very tight, tidy basement dig. And so once we get this area, we can continue to excavate out here at the same time, as long as this stays about a foot and a half to two feet lower than what we're excavating. Once this is to grade, we don't have to mess with this other than just little clean up tidy passes. And so we can get a little more aggressive out here and we can really start hogging. Now let's talk about why am I digging this in this little bit of a wedge here? Well, if you can imagine as we're digging along, we're gonna start digging. And let me check my overhead view to make sure we're in frame here. I don't wanna be screwing you guys up. Okay, so as I'm digging, we're gonna track our machine back, track our machine back, and we're gonna dig this to where it's totally tight and we've got a nice clean face right here at the edge. As much of this material as we can, remember, we wanna throw out in front here because that's where we want all of our dirt. But when we finally get all the way butted up against this corner or pretty dang close, I don't have to take it all the way to the corner because when I round the corner and I set up on this line, now I can make sure that this little chunk right here is perfectly square because I've dug it pretty dang close going this way and then we're gonna come in with our bucket and we're gonna do just a nice clean shave right down the bank and then we're gonna pull it back. 
And now we've established this line as being very square, as well as shaved this little face right here perfectly square. That's how you get really, really square corners in a basement dig. Now, the reason we cut this on a wedge is, as you can see, again, my excavator is not to scale, so it's not like I can sit at the back corner of the basement and dig it. Realistically, I'm going to be up in here. Well, if I had dug this whole thing all the way over to the edge, guess what? I have nowhere to sit with my excavator. Now I'm going to have to sit off here to the side, and I'm going to have to somehow dig this thing somewhat square at a goofy angle, and it's just going to be a disastrous mess for me. So if we don't dig this area out here and we leave it for ourselves, I've now got a nice platform that I can sit on. And so we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to line up. I'm going to do my air pass to make sure that I'm truly lined up on my over dig. And just like we did over here, I'm going to establish this line and keep it about a foot and a half deeper than everything I'm reaching out here. Now, because we don't want a ton of material on this side of the house, I'm... I've already dug this whole big portion here and thrown it out in the front yard. So realistically, all I'm going to do is I'm going to dig kind of this chunk here. And again, we're going to kind of wedge in so that when I round the corner, I've got a place to sit. But we're only going to dig this area here and throw it out to the side. What that does is it gives us enough material that we can doze back in to fill in the overdig after, after the basement's poured. And then we have a little bit to form a slope away from the house. You always want to have a pitch away from the house when you're done. And so having a little material on this side, even though it's pretty balanced, is good because we're going to need to grade up against the house and we're certainly going to have to backfill up against the basement when it's poured. So as we work our way down this line, do 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 do, we get back into this corner and we've been throwing all of this material over to the side, which isn't very much. Now, because we left ourselves a wedge, we're going to flip around and now we're going to dig ourselves along the back of the basement. The key thing to think about here is when we round to this side and to the front, I have to be able to reach everything. And so as we go along the back side of the house here, I'm concerned with what can I reach? And I don't want to take more than that. Because again, if we load up, we dig all of this chunk of the basement here and throw it into the backyard, that means I now have to doze all of that material around to the front side. I've got a full day of wasting gas in my dozer because of the way that I dug this. So let's say from this line here, I can reach out to about here. And from this line here, I can reach out to about here. That means all I'm going to do is I'm going to reach out from this back wall and I'm going to dig this kind of chunk here. And it's going to come in again to a wedge. And so moving across the back of the house, we're going to excavate kind of this big chunk and let's let's color it in with our marker here so we've already got this side excavated right and then as we went down this edge we excavated this chunk here and now as we come across the back we're going to excavate this chunk and notice we're swinging wide here because there's nowhere there's there's no way we're going to be able to reach that from the front of the house so we're going to excavate this big old area out here but then as we get within reach of this side we're going to start to taper down and so this whole area here is going to get excavated and thrown out to the back of the house. And that's okay because look at how long the back of the house is. We've, we're going to have a lot of overdig to fill here and we're going to have to again slope it and pitch it away from the house. So believe it or not, even though we're pretty balanced, we are going to need a decent amount of material in the back of the house just to fill in the length of our overdig and to grade this whole area. So we don't have to panic that we've got a little extra material. But now as we round the corner of this house, this is where we're going to get really aggressive. And depending on the situation, I actually might taper this a lot quicker. So maybe we only dig that portion because as I set up on this line, if I get my machine square in the corner here, I may actually not even dig this section from here over. I may set my machine up in a way that I can sit right in the corner and as I'm square, I can reach out this way. But then I can also start to excavate everything out in here. I'm not going to dig behind me. I'm not going to undermine myself behind me. But I may take this kind of whole big chunk here, depending on how much material. Let me see if I'm getting. Okay, we're still in, still in the picture. Depending on how much material I'm getting here, I may actually save this kind of chunk here and throw it off to the side of the house here. 
And then as I continue to work my way back, let me spin my, my upper structure back around here. As I continue to work my way back, I'm gonna get, again, you're always gauging, you're always looking to see how much material you have, but I may dig this whole big chunk right here and that all goes over to this side of the house. And then I'm gonna get myself into a situation to where, oh, we're gonna need more material up front. And as soon as I get there, assuming I'm sitting here again, I can actually go ahead and round the corner. Once you've got your line established right here, that you've, you've dug it and you have a good reference line, we can go ahead and round the corner. And now I've got a reference line that I can very easily shave down the banks. And we can still make that very square, even though my machine is sitting over here. And so now we can reach out here and we can get aggressive and we can dig all of this material now. And it's all gonna go in the front yard. So by far and away, the majority of the material of the basement, this huge chunk, let's say we did cut it. So you're talking this huge chunk of the basement right here, everything on this side went to the two sides where we really need dirt. Along with, if you remember when we started this thing, this kind of wedge here, let me get a, a darker Sharpie. I know this is turning into a disaster and I apologize. But really remember we did this wedge here that got thrown out front here too, right? So we have this huge chunk along with this huge chunk has all gone to the areas where we really needed that dirt. And so we've got just enough material on the other sides of the house that we can do our backfill, but the majority of the balance is where we need it. And again, because we planned this from the get-go and we only excavated this part, that means that I get to end my dig with one closeout hole. And the way we're gonna finish that is, if you can imagine, my machine's gonna be sitting kind of here and I'm tracking backwards because we have to account, remember we have to account for the over dig. So I'm gonna be off of my line a little bit. And then when I get to the point where my machine is square on this line and it's square on this line, again, accounting for the over dig, I'm actually going to establish a solid line this way along with the line this way. And that way, once I've dug everything up to the machine, I can kind of pull off to the side here and we're gonna have one close out. And so I can finish out, I can get myself lined up to where I can pull this clean and then I can track myself back over here to the side and I can pull this clean. And you're gonna end with a pretty tight corner here, nice and tidy, and all of the material is exactly where you need it to be. So that is how, I know that was pretty lengthy and I know we got really, really messy on our paper here, but that is how I approach a basement dig. It's not that difficult. It's intimidating the first time you walk up to it, but with just a little bit of planning and having done it a couple of times, very quickly you'll discover there's really not anything to it. It just takes a second or two to think about really where do we want the material to end up and where do I want to finish out? And just make sure that you're not gonna dig yourself into a situation to where, like I said, if we go back here, if we over dig one of these corners, now all of a sudden I don't have anywhere to sit with my excavator. That's the only way you can really get yourself into some trouble in a basement is if you dig yourself into a situation to where you have no place to sit square to the hole and you're having to do some really funky digging. So as always, I hope this helps and, uh, and feel free to reach out with any comments or questions. We'll catch you guys on the next Down and Dirty.